everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to crochet this beautiful, precious metals cowl. This is a great way to practice the Tunisian simple stitch, which I'm gonna show you how to do every stitch of the way. We're gonna make a big rectangle and then learn how to seam it up at the end. Now this is, a, as you can see, a tall cowl. It is 13 inches tall and has a circumference of 24 inches after seaming. And when we kind of scrunch it up, like this, you can see how cozy and lofty and warm this cow is. This would make a wonderful gift uh, for the cooler months on down the road, or if you just wanna kinda try your hand at some Tunisian crochet. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a tape measure is super helpful to kinda measure as you go along. And for our hook, we're gonna be using a 6.5 millimeter K Tunisian crochet hook. Um, this is, uh, as you can see, a lot longer than a regular crochet hook. If you've never tried Tunisian crochet, um, I'm gonna walk you through every step of this project, and this is a good project if you're new to this skill. Now, there are different styles of these, and what I had to do was try the two different styles and figure out what I liked best. Now, you can get a long, kind of straight one, or another style you can try is this one I have here, where it looks more like a traditional crochet hook, but then it has like a, a flexible cord coming out of the back of it and like a little bead to sort of like keep the stitches from falling off the edge. Um, some people really prefer this more flexible hook, um, and some people like the rigid kind of long straight style. So what I would recommend if you're new to this and you're, you're curious and, and getting started, um, try both styles and see what you like best. Some people really prefer this flexible style and some people like the longer kind of uh, sturdier, straighter hook. So you'll have to try and see what you prefer. The yarn that we're going to be using for this project is called Scarfy by Lion Brand Yarn. This is um, kind of like a ombre sort of self-striping tonal looking yarn and each ball of this is 312 yards and it is machine wash but lay flat to dry just as a side note. I'm going to be using a color called Ice Gold and it does come in dye lots. So if you end up using more than one ball, I'm just gonna be using one ball of this yarn. If you end up using more though, if you wanna make something like longer or wider, um, just know to match your dye lots up so that your color is uh, as consistent looking as possible. If you need to substitute yarn, look on the yarn label for a bulky five and a yarn that also recommends the 6.5 millimeter K crochet hook as well. Okay, so for our lovely cow, we're going to be doing 50 chains to begin. All right, so what we wanna do um, with Tunisian crochet, we're gonna get all of our loops onto the hook. It's gonna be a little bit different, but like I said before, I'm gonna walk you through step by step. So what we wanna do first is put a slip knot on our hook, just like we normally would. Wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop, and tighten, okay? Next, what we're gonna do is chain 50, and then we're gonna get them all onto the hook, okay? So first things first, let's chain 50. So to make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 49 and 50. So we're gonna be working back into these chains. So try to um, not make them too tight. And this is actually going to be the height of our cow. So it's gonna be nice and tall and warm and slouchy. So if you don't want your cow to be so tall, um, let me just give you a quick measurement. There's no special chain count with this. You can add or subtract as many chains as you like. So just to give you an idea, this is gonna have a height of about 15 inches or so, give or take. Just to give you an idea if that's too tall for you for your cow preference, um, you know, just take them, take them down a little bit. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is get all of these loops onto our hook. All right, so we're gonna skip this loop here, we're not gonna worry about, and the first chain that we made, we're gonna skip that as well. So in that next chain, what you wanna do is insert the hook into that chain and bring up a loop. 
and that's it. You're just going to leave that on your hook. Let's go into the next chain. Insert the hook into the, the next chain. Wrap the yarn around the hook. Bring up a loop. Insert the hook into the next chain. Wrap the yarn around the hook. Bring up a loop. And we're just leaving those right on there, okay? So let's just do that all the way across. Insert, bring up a loop. Next chain, insert, bring up a loop. Now I would recommend uh, Tunisian crochet fabric can be very uh, dense. It's very kind of thick and warm and cozy. So you want to keep your hands nice and loose while you work. You don't want anything to be too tight, okay? It can get, it can get kind of tight really quickly on you sometimes. All right, next chain, we're going to go in, bring up a loop, bring up a loop, in the next chain, bring up a loop. We're just doing this all the way across. Now, as you get more and more loops on your hook, you might want to hold your hook back here, okay? If you have the other style, you can start to push them back. Let me grab it. You can start to push them back on your uh, flexible cord, okay? But if you have a straight one like me, you can just leave them on there. All right, let's keep going. Insert into the next chain, bring up a loop. Next chain, bring up a loop. Next chain, bring up a loop. Pushing things back as needed. Again, try to keep things nice and loose. Not too loose, we don't want it to look sloppy, but we want to not have any tightness because it'll be hard to work into this stuff if we do. All right, we're just bringing up loops all the way across with our yarn. Okay. And again, if you don't want your cow to be so tall, just do less chains from the get-go, okay? We're just going all the way across with our little loops here. Now I'm getting some twisting. That's okay. We'll straighten it all out. It's no big deal. Just getting all that stuff put on my hook to start. Now, if you are a seasoned Tunisian crochet stitcher, you can feel free to fast forward through any of the parts that are familiar to you. Okay, we're just coming up to the end. I just have two little chains left. So insert, bring up a loop, leave it on the hook. And that last chain, insert, bring up a loop, leave it on the hook, okay? So as you can see, we have lots of loops on our hook here. And we are going to now, so when you do Tunisian crochet, you go um, this way, then this way, then this way. So we are going to bring our hook back through these loops, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to deal with this tail later and not worry about it. What we want to do now is bring the hook back through all these loops, okay? So just make sure everything is nice and straight. Make sure it's not all twisted around. And what we're going to do now is wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through that first loop only, okay? Then what we're gonna do is wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the next two loops, just like that. Wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through the next two loops. Wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through the next two loops. Wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through the next two loops. And we're just going to do this all the way across. I know we have a lot of loops here, but I'm going to do it together with you um, in case you have never done this before. Okay? Yarn around hook, bring it through the two loops. Yarn around hook, bring it through the next two loops. Yarn around hook, next two loops. Yarn around hook, next two loops. Yarn around hook, next two loops. Next two loops, next two loops. We're just doing the same thing all the way across. Okay, just like that. Now when you're doing this, you wanna make sure that your hands are nice and relaxed. You don't want things to get too tight. This is a very um, lofty kind of solid fabric that this is gonna produce. And you wanna push your loops up as you kind of were working across. You don't want anything stretching. We're just wrapping the yarn around hook, going through two loops. Yarn around hook, two loops. Yarn around hook, two loops, and we're just doing this all the way across. Okay, yarn around hook, bring it through two loops. Pushing things up as needed.
All right, we're coming up to the end. And as you can see, we're gonna have a lot of nice height on our cow, it's gonna be very cozy. All right, so here we are towards the end. Yarn around hook, two loops. Yarn around hook, two loops. And look, we have two loops left, yarn around hook, two loops, okay? So let's look at what we've done. We have a very interesting, it almost has like a, a herringbone look to it. All right, so we're gonna come back the other direction, okay? So what we wanna do is, if we look at the structure of this, we have a, a loop here on our hook and we have uh, some vertical loops here. We're gonna be working into those vertical loops except that very first one. So see this first one here? We're not gonna worry about that at all. We're just gonna kind of skip over that. That's directly above the loop that's on our hook. So what we wanna do is go into that next one. So you have a vertical one here and a vertical one here and we're gonna come up under it like that, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring up a loop, just like that. That's it. Go in up under the next one, wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through, and leave it on the hook, just like that. We're gonna put all the loops back on the hook. So as we work across, we're kind of taking them off as we work this way, and then we're putting them back on, okay? Super easy. We're gonna come up under this loop, wrap the yarn around the hook, bring up a loop, okay? Um, as you can see, this fabric that we're creating is very dense. It's not lacy and uh, loopy and drapey. So you want to just kind of keep your tension um, not too loose, but you want to keep your hands nice and relaxed and not try not to work too tightly, okay? So come up under the next one, bring up a loop, and leave it on there. Bring it up under that next vertical bar, bring up a loop, leave that loop on there. And we're just going to do this in every single one of those vertical bars all the way across, okay? So we're just going through the process now of putting all these loops back on our hook, okay? And if you need to, as you get more and more loops on here, you can kind of push everything back or not. It's up to you. Um, sometimes if, if your tension is loose enough, it might be kind of sliding itself back. But if, you, if you're getting some bunching, you definitely want to like pause for a minute and, and push it back a little bit, okay? So just get all these loops back on here. So I'm going to keep doing this, and then when we rejoin, I'm going to show you um, how to work the end. The end loop you might have to kind of look for a little bit more. It's not going to be as obvious, okay? So let's keep working across and then we'll rejoin in just a minute. Okay, so we have a lot of loops now, and we just have a couple of chains left to work. So I'm gonna get that second to last one here, get it on there, and then the very last one is that, is that one at the very edge, okay? Um, sometimes if your, your piece is rolled back or turned back, it might be hard to see, you might have to sort of pick it up, but that very last vertical bar at the very end, you're also gonna insert your hook wrap the yarn around the hook, bring up a loop, okay? So my stitches are filling up my entire hook. So you can see how um, neat that looks when they're all in there, okay? So for the rest of your piece, either till you get the circumference that you want or you run out of yarn, whatever happens first, um, whatever you uh, need, you're just gonna keep repeating these two rows I showed you over and over and over again. So the ones where you uh, get the, all the hooks off or loops off of the hook, and then you're going to come back this way and get them all back on. If you need to rewatch this, rewatch what I just showed you, you can back up the video at any time. You can rewatch it as many times as possible. If you need to slow down, there's also a slow motion feature too in YouTube that you can enable as well. So let me just get you started on the, the row again. So we're going to get the loops off the hook this time. So wrap the yarn around the hook and you're just gonna bring it through one loop that first time, okay? Just remember that one loop that very first time and then two for each one after, okay? So wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through both loops. Wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through both loops. Yarn around the hook, two loops. Yarn around the hook, two loops, and so forth, okay? So just keep repeating the, two, the last two rows that I showed you 
and then we're going to rejoin and I'm going to show you how to finish that very last row of your piece. So save a little bit of yarn to work one last row and then we're going to seam it and make a tube and I'm going to show you some finished work next. Okay, so we went ahead and worked a bunch more rows and you can see this gradient is so pretty how it goes from silver to gold. And let me just give you some quick dimensions here. We have, it's about 13, a little over 13 inches wide. And then now if you notice that Tunisian Simple Stitch wants to curl up, we're gonna be turning this into a cowl, so it's not a big deal here. But if we measure from one end here, you gotta unwrap it a little bit, uncurl it. Go all the way down to the other end, uncurling this end. Again, these are gonna be sewn together, so it won't matter. Um, and I'm, I'm at about 26 inches. And before we wrap things up, we need to do what's called the bind off, okay? So what we're gonna do is bring our project, go back up to the top here, so bring this down to the bottom, and we're gonna grab our hook. Let me zoom way in so you can see what I'm doing here. This part is super easy. Now, I saved just a little smidge of yarn that will be enough to bind off and to seam it, okay? So I'm gonna insert my hook back into the loop. Now, to do this, you have to go across and then back um, so you have one loop on the hook to begin the bind off, okay? So you get to the point where you have one loop left on the hook on this right-hand side. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into that first loop of our row here. We're gonna insert the hook, bring up a loop. You'll have two loops on the hook. And then you're gonna bring the loop that you just worked and bring it through the loop that's already on your hook, okay? So bring that loop through that loop, and that's it. Go into the next loop and do the same thing. Insert the hook into that next loop, bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop already on. Now I didn't mention this before, but I know we started with one loop, but see how it sort of looks hollow at the top? You don't want to end up like that. You want it to be solid. Like see how this looks solid now and this looks open? We want to fill that in, if you will. Okay, and we're just going to do this all the way across. Go into the next loop, bring up a loop, bring that loop through that loop. Go into the next loop, wrap your yarn around the hook, bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And we're just gonna do this all the way across, okay? So work this all the way across. You're gonna just do this until you get to the other end, okay? So go ahead and work that across and see how nice it looks? It looks exactly like the rest of it. All right, I went all the way across. I'm just coming up to the end. I'm gonna work that very last loop. Remember it's over here kind of hanging out on the side. Bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And you'll have just one loop left. So when you're done with that, you can take your scissors and actually, let's cut a long tail to save us a step. So grab your yarn ball and let's cut a piece, oh, about 24 to 32 inches long. Make it a little longer than necessary. Cut the yarn. And then what you're gonna do is wrap the yarn around your hook and pull it all the way through, okay? So just go ahead and pull that through. And again, I made this a little longer than necessary, but I'd rather have too much than not enough. And then just give it a, a little bit of a tightening. And now we're ready to seam. So we can move our hook and our yarn out of the way. And what we're gonna do is grab our tail here and kind of put it out of the way. I have one other yarn end. I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that right now. So grab your tapestry needle. I'm just gonna give it a little twist to help it go through the eye of the needle. Thread that needle, and then I'm gonna try and stay in this gold area with this gold tail so it won't show. If I go into the silver section just right above it, it will show. So go into those back loops on the inside of it. Go in one direction, and then come back with it in the other direction. And then you can grab your scissors once again. Give it a little snip. And now we're ready to seam, okay? So what we're gonna do, this is the outside. 
this fabric, let me zoom out so you can see better. This is the outside, this is the inside. It looks a little bit different. It's kind of like how knit fabric looks different like that. So we're gonna flip it and fold it inward. So the outside is on the inside. And then we're gonna grab our tail here. And we're gonna thread our tail, our long tail that we left. Next, we're gonna carefully line our edges up. Again, this is still inside out. And I've threaded my needle. And we're just gonna go in and start seaming, okay? So go in that corner here and pull it all the way through. And we're gonna whip stitch it. The whip stitch is just a spiral through your work. It's nice and invisible. And you wanna try and catch two loops on the bottom layer. You might need to turn it a little bit and catch two loops on the top layer. See that? And go through. And we're gonna go a couple inches or so, and then we're gonna turn it right side out for a minute just to make sure everything looks okay. You'll wanna check your seam, whenever you're seaming something really, not just this project, but whenever you're seaming something, you'll want to um, check your seam before you're completely done, okay? I like to go a few inches in and then just kind of look at it and make sure that everything looks nice and neat. Okay. Now let's uh, take a little peek here and it looks nice, okay? Make sure everything's lined up and everything looks nice and neat, okay? So just continue across with your seam. And again, we have plenty of yarn. Okay, so I just wanted to show you, I went in a ways and everything's lining up nicely. So I'm gonna keep on seaming. All right, we went all the way across and now I just have to put those very last few little stitches in at the end. So what you're gonna do, and I like to just come around the edge just to make sure, because sometimes you'll get like a dip in it, okay? So if you just put one right around the corner there, it helps. All right, so then what you'll wanna do is put your needle back in there and pull it through, but don't go all the way through. Leave a little loop and you're gonna pull it in and then I'm gonna put one more knot in there. It's easy to do while you already have the needle in there to do it that way. And then while you still have the needle threaded, go into your piece and we're gonna just weave that end in. And that'll take care of everything right then and there. So I'm gonna go in one direction, try to go into the back loops only. This is still inside out. So we're just gonna go into the back loops only and in one direction. And then come back in the other direction with your needle. And then you can grab your scissors, give it a little snip. Straighten everything out, and then we're gonna turn it. Okay, let's turn it right side out. And it looks great. Now, this, as you can see, this cowl is on the tall side, but the yarn is very warm and cozy. So when you wear it, you know, it'll scrunch up real nice around your neck, okay? So our cowl is complete. It looks wonderful. It's a great way to learn the Tunisian simple stitch or if you just wanna practice a little bit, it has a wonderful little um, ombre color gradient look to it. So that is how you crochet the Precious Metals Cowl. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again.